Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Well, we had a bit of a nothing week on the Australian Stock Market last week, which is not as bad as it might seem. Now tonight, we aim to help you make sense of the current market and we'll get into the major world currencies and give you our thoughts on how they're going. For our main topic in tonight's show, we get into some of the top small cap stocks that are set to outperform the best blue chip stocks in 2024. Now, first up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax tonight. We'll be jam packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls, and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the stock market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now tonight, we're gonna to cover several very interesting stocks, including Paladin Energy, Data3, Goodman Group, Westpac, and more. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight, and joining me is Janine Cox, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening, and hello, Dale. Thank you for that lovely welcome. You will love what we have lined up for you tonight, as we're going to compare some of the top blue chip stocks to a good few ASX small cap companies that have the potential to outperform. So stay tuned as we'll get into that and more very soon. But first, we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. All righty, Janine, on the screen we got, we're gonna actually be only talking about Medibank Private, but I do wanna go into Market Index first because somebody switched my computer screen around. <laughs> that um, must have been me. Must have been you <laughs> playing it, you're not allowed to do that. I just love just to see you on your toes. Well, I know you do that, you do that. <laughs> do you do it to annoy me intentionally? <laughs> Possibly. Okay, I bet you do. <laughs> um, dividend, you're not too bad, 4.23%, slightly below market average, but not too bad. P ratio, not too bad at 18.55, so looking good. Um, had a one-year return of about 19.38%. Still, you know, obviously $3.45 stock, so not too bad there. Good on the market cap, $9.5 billion if we just go down. And you can see the chart, it's a very, very choppy stock, but we'll look at Opta in the middle. And obviously, Medibank Private, um, is the, its core business is underwriting and distribution of public health insurance po policies through its two brands, Medibank and AHM. So um, I don't use them for my health cover, do you? No. So nobody does. So why is their, why is their price so good? We're not that important, obviously. Oh, we're not that important. <laughs> so let's go and have a look at Optima. I'm gonna bring up the monthly chart just to show you how volatile this actually is. It's, it's amazing, a, isn't it? For that type very, of stock to volatile. see this sort of volatility. It's, it's so yeah. cyclical. It is very cyclical, because you look at that, that's 32%, that run down. Um, if we look at this rundown, there's another 33%. And you wouldn't think that this would be a trading stock. Just thinking no. about what it is, you would think that it would be an investor's stock. But to Correct. look at it, it's a brilliant trading stock, isn't yeah. it? Up 52% there. Um, yeah. More recently, if we go and look at the run from November last year through to that peak up 30, nearly 35%. So it's a great looking stock from that point of view. It does move if you get onto it. Now, the chance... What we need to look at at the moment is, is this thing going to be taking off at the moment? Now, I know we put a little bit of, tiny bit of work on Well, this. it's stalled at the moment, isn't it, really? It's just risen all the way back up to that range. It'll be interesting to see whether those mm. who are holding it decide to just give it, flip it and just short it and push it down. Oh, it is. It just seems to be trading sort of within this sort mm. of momentum, doesn't it? Which is, I mean, obviously outlined by these uh, pink uh, lines that we've got there but right now the momentum is looking good but you can see this whole lot of resistance right across here and we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into the to the weekly chart but as you said very very cyclical moves up moves strongly up comes down moves strongly up comes down moves strongly up comes down and just keeps doing it in a yeah. very cyclical manner. So I, I wonder like if it. people out there are thinking that this is one of the best healthcare stocks. Maybe you've got a stock that you prefer. Well, you can always text us and call into the show later on to let us know. I'd like to hear what people say. Do they like mm -hmm. MPL or are there other healthcare stocks they like? Well, I don't know. Which one do you like? Oh, Sonic Healthcare is nice. I do. CSL. We're I was waiting talking a lot about that yesterday mm. on my market report. We are talking about Sonic Healthcare. I was talking about CSL. I was talking about a few of those stocks actually. Looking at what was good um, in terms of um, you know, to be put on your watch list right now. And then I did my recording for Hot Copper, mm. um, which went out 
today on Hot Copper as oh, well. How so exciting. we might have a few new people watching our show tonight. So if you're new to watching, talking uh, this show, Australian Stock Market Show, welcome to our show. But let's do a little bit more work on on um, Medibank Private. I want to share a few more things with people. And as you saw, you had the little bit of a trend line up there. It's not really a trend line. It's momentum indicator, that which is what you had. Well, that consolidation is not really. It's huge. Um, typical of what it's done before because no, it not. normally makes those consolidations towards the bottom mm. or along the run so mm. I, I wonder if this is part way through one of the an overall rise i think it is is because you've got this lot of resistance around that sort of three dollar sixty mark mm. as you can see right through there and you know we've got a little bit of a distribution consolidation phase there so i think a break up above this black line through here and a nice solid weekly close I like it. I think it's got more more legs. Well done. That could be interesting. Well, that's it for our weekly hot stock tip. Shortly, we will get into what have been some of the best blue chip stocks on our market, and we will share how these stocks are likely to perform versus small companies. But before we do, right now, it is your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Remember, we'll prioritise phone callers. So call now on 0392909988. That's 0392909988. Or you can text your question to the number on your screen. Okay, and as always, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy, free copy of my book, Accelerate Your so I can't say it. And Accelerate I wrote it. your wealth. Accelerate mm. your wealth. So pick up your <laughs> phone and dial 92909988 right now. Now, whilst you do that, tonight is the fourth Tuesday in the month, which means we take a look at the world currencies. So, Janine, let's get into it. All right, Dale, on the screen, screen there, right? yeah. we can see the Russian ruble right at the top. The, the Aussie Russian dollar ruble. versus the Russian ruble. Well, we're actually looking at the whole watch list, but... Well, I'm just pointing to one. If you want to have an argument about what I'm looking at, then go for it. I'm not going to argue with you, but I'm just saying you're looking at a watch list. We're getting list. off to a good start tonight, aren't we? Let's just All right. get back to the chart. Australian dollar versus the Russian ruble now. Um, we can see it's up 17.35%, which is huge. Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen is actually doing really well, up 10%. So that's good to see for our currency mm -hmm. against the Japanese yen. Uh, a lot of things are changing at the moment in the marketplace. Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar is up about 1%, which is nice. So for those of you who are planning on that trip overseas, it's starting to look quite nice there to go to New Zealand, isn't it? Well, it is as long as you're not <laughs> you're going on You were just thinking about it, weren't you? Well, it's great as long as you're not going on a boat. You were just thinking, well, I wish I could go. It'd be nice. <laughs> uh, well, you can go anytime you like. When you just you don't want to go on a boat. You just Well, you don't want to go on a boat because you'll get covid and then they won't let you into New Zealand anyway because the boat's dirty. That's not fun, is it? No, All definitely right. not. All right, then we've got um, Australian dollar versus the Chinese renminbi yuan, mm. which is pretty much flat, up 0.19%. Not too bad. Aussie dollar versus the US dollar, though. All of the 66 rest cents? is okay. in red. So, yeah, 66 cents. What do you make of that? We're sort of still low, sitting in it? that low. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit low. What do you want to see it move to? I, th I think that, I mean, the US dollar, we've done a few recordings on the death of the US mm. dollar for talking wealth with some of our experts like Dana Samuelson and, and I think, you know, I think the Aussie dollar is going to be um, up strongly against the US dollar in the next year, I reckon. Well, that Especially once commodities seen, start to really rise. It's the commodity side that's really going to mm, push it. If yeah. that can move, I think we can take that. Well, that all relies on, we want to see BHP as well and Rio and all the mining stocks take Correct. off. We need the commodities to push up. Mm. You're right. So look, um, let's have a look at what else is on the list there. We've got obviously Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar down 2.63%. I'll be interested to track over the year to see whether the, mm -hmm. these two stay together, the Aussie versus US and the Aussie versus the Canadian dollar. Now you want to go and talk about the pound sterling on a oh, chart, I really want you? to talk about the British pound sterling. So cool. can we jump to that right now? It's down 7.2%, mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting to have a look at. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at the chart. Now, I mean, this is completely different to a lot of the other charts. We've it looked is. at the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar and seen the potential um, turn there. But when you're looking at this, it looks really bearish. I mean, we've got this move. We can see these lows getting higher. And it's just odd to see this sort of shape happening on the Australian dollar um, versus the versus anything, really. But to see it on the British pound. So you'd have to think that right now, given we've come back to the angle of that line, it's more likely to start taking off from there. You well, you'd think, think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. And we did see some moves up um, in the currency. But in latest things that we've been reading with the, um, the inflation um, softening, we're seeing it. Mm. 
fall, it really fell away heavily. Um, that the the pound actually eased off, mm. so it eased. But if I look at that, to me that looks really bullish right it now. It looks yeah, like yeah. if it breaks out above that high, we're going to see a big move up. Mm. Anything under this outside bar, and I'll just expand that up. So if in case you haven't got a magnifying glass there to look at what I was showing you, below this low, 27th of October, then obviously it's going to ease off a bit further. But okay. That's the guidelines on the Australian dollar versus the British pound. So that's our thoughts on world currencies for now. Before we get into the first email, remember to get your email questions answered live on air in next week's show. You must send your questions in to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now let's get into our first question. Alrighty, our first email is from Craig who says, Hi, Dale and Janine. Thanks for your great weekly show as always. Now, I recently completed the short course and plan to complete the diploma next year as I thoroughly enjoyed the course. Um, he goes on to say, I would love to have a or have you to have a look at Dicker Data or DDR tonight. This was my first trade after completing the short course. My entry was in the first week of October, $9.80 with a medium time frame. My initial stop loss was 15% and now I have raised this. Um, it's currently trading around $11 range with previous resistance at this level back in late 2022 to early 2023. No valid uptrend can be drawn as yet, um, but it does look to be following the upward momentum line from the low back in July 2023. Thanks in advance for your thoughts on this regards, Craig. So what do you think? Mate, I think he's knocked it out of the park. He's knocked it out of the park. Craig, you've Jeez, knocked it out of the park. He's only done three modules of the five modules. Great, I know. Great stock choice. Mm. Yeah, you've done really well and just at the Did right you? time as well. Can we show something on the chart? Or are you I don't just think we need to say any more. Why not? <laughs> okay, let's go to the chart. Just you kidding. not wanting to look at a chart. Like <laughs> yeah, that'll be your first one. Are you it? feeling all right? Do I need to get a thermometer <laughs> and something? I'm feeling a bit red tonight. <laughs> You're feeling red, red tonight. Okay. All right, let's go to so the chart. that's the monthly chart, yep. Okay, we'll squash that right up just so that we can get an appreciation for how this is going. Now, interesting, the support level mm. that it's found. I'm that liking that. So anyone who's done our courses will be looking at that saying, yep, I can see that too. Just, I'll just put a horizontal line across there. Um, right across and we can see and there's a number of levels there if I can just grab it um, so you can see that's the first one that we he probably would have identified himself based on the fact that he's got some knowledge and he's been listening to you on mm. and off as well even outside of doing the course but it's just gone up that would have been the first sign that first bar off that low that there was a potential for it to follow through but then he would have gone to the weekly chart and just skipping across and just seeing this nice little um, consolidation that happened there. It pushed up, so giving a nice little signal mm. there. And since then, the, the lows are getting higher, which is what you want to see, and the highs are getting higher. And it's just in a nice trend now. So, you know, that's a really mm. great sign to see. I don't think we need to say a lot about it. No, we don't. I mean, obviously, he's just talking about there's momentum coming up through here. Now, that's not a valid mm. trend line. But that's what he's talking about. So when it does become a valid trend line, all I'd be saying, Craig, is use that as your stop loss, as your trailing link stop loss. I think it would work quite well on this stock. Okay. Um, but I do. I think he's done a brilliant job for his application, having mm. like literally just completing the course on his first trade. One thing I would suggest is when he gets into Module 4, because um, he does intend to do Module 4, he'll get access to Trading Essentials. So he'll be able to send his trades in and all the trading oh, yeah. plan his work and work with the team to really mm. fine-tune some of all this anyway. But I do like it. Well done. Yep, well done, Craig, and make sure you take advantage of all of that. Mm. All right, we do have a text, Janine, to get into, and this one is from James, and he looks like he's want to us to have a look at CDA. He said, it looks like hit resistance, may be poised for a continuation. Um, a short to medium term trade on my watch list, not in the stock currently. So let's have a look at that stock. Yeah, this looks nice, doesn't mm. it? And look, I had been looking at this stock mm. as well. Um, just big picture first, I'll just go back to the monthly chart so we can really appreciate what this stock has done. In percentage terms, we can mm -hmm. see that from the high, and this is where the opportunity lies because that's it's actually... Move, isn't it? it is, because you've got an 80% fall. That's got a really sort of 
first of all, um, raise something in your mind once the stock's fallen that far. It's either going to continue to fall and go back to its all-time low, could be delisted, or if you start to see some rules being met off these lows, you could have a nice little trade short term, which mm. is what happened. So there have been a number of opportunities to trade this little one. Mm. It's at a resistance level at the moment. Possibly. Um, but you know, seeing this level across here at around $9, it could hit its head there temporarily. So mm. this is probably why it's just trading sideways right now. And we're seeing... Well, just the momentum's mm, come off it, hasn't it? Yeah, really? it's slowed right down. And we've seen that a lot of, a lot of stocks for this year because, I mean, really, we've had a nothing year. We're not really up and we're not really down. Oh, it's been... A, it's not it's great. A, yeah, unless you're short-term trading. It's been one of out. those years mm. that makes you swear. <laughs> it's like hot damn. keeps you guessing well it does it's like you know, it's one minute it looks like it's going either. and the next minute the it's going the other way mm. so to me at the moment yeah. that's just just really doesn't have a lot of energy in it but then if you bring that up and we have a good look at it i think there's some you know you'd have to be excited about this stock because it is starting to break above these sorts of resistance levels so i do like it yeah you just have to be prepared that if mm. it does break above it it could mm. come back it could because come back. it spent so long trading at that price there mm. so you know, I just have to be mindful. And it's about the stop loss, isn't it, at the end of the day and making sure that you're covered and you're protecting yourself. So, you know, there's a low there, which is within reason. Mm. It's not too far away. That's a nice little level. Mm. All right. Well, if you want to text us, the number is on your screen or keeps coming up. So please text us. If you want to give us a call, pick up the phone and dial 92909988. Now we have an email from a different Craig. There's two Craigs in a row who has given us some feedback that I actually thought uh, might resonate with a lot of you, our viewers. Um, Craig writes, hi Dale and Janine, uh, thank you once again for the education that has been provided by you and your staff. Just to note, I did celebrate once I finished the diploma and course in Contracts for Difference FX course that we run. Um, I started the courses two years ago and have successfully completed these courses. While my job is very busy for three months, a year working seven days a week and he's got vintage maybe he's into vintage wines i don't know um, and also doing a house makeover reno with family commitments there's always time to study and the benefits are very rewarding i bought dale's first book in 2006 and the courses were available to be done then but i was always busy what got me to do the course was 15 years later was as I just turned 50 and I didn't want to turn or get to 67 and go, I wish I had done that. Um, I am successfully trading and loving each component that unfolds. The Talking Wealth TV you set up last year is always great in a week when the world feels like it's collapsing around you. And this always helps me to reflect and pick myself up again after anything that has happened. Merry Christmas and happy new year thanks great i thought i'd he sent that to us personally but i thought mm. how often do you see people say i wish i had done your course 10 or 20 years ago or i wish i'd yeah. started trading then um all the time and it's all mm. the time so it's, it's something we say constantly and it's nice to see somebody who's happy to send that through and yep. say look i'm trading successfully thank you for the support mm. all the things you do so i mean craig I think, I mean, I'd keep putting my hands together for him because he's, it's, it's like, there's an old saying, the teacher can it's only open the door, the student has yeah. to walk through. True. So he has to, had to do the work to get through the diploma course and the exactly. FX CFD course to do what he's doing right now. Mm. We can only, and same with the team that we have, and I was only saying. Only exceptional people do that. Yeah, well, I was only saying mm. on Talking Wealth yesterday on my market report is there's seven people behind you and me, seven traders mm. that sit behind you and me, and they, and and I, and I say that not with, oh, they're lesser than us. Mm. When I say that they're behind us, there are seven traders that support everybody. Actually, even though everybody. you've written a lot of the course material, mm. I mean, they've contributed in a great everybody way to that as now, well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I can't say that they're sort of behind mm. us. They stand equal to us. Yeah. And, you know, they're just... Well, well, you and I are the front people, mm. I suppose. They're the ones, they're the engine room helping people like Craig do what they like. So, to so me, are you the hood ornament? I'm the hood ornament. I'm the fancy one on the front of the car. That's mine. But Janine, we do have a phone call, so how about we get into that? Um, this one, I believe, is from Willem. Willem, welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. You're on with Dale and Janine. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you, Dale. And Janine, how are you? Good, thank you. Fantastic. Is this the first time you've called into the show? 
Oh, no, I did call in once a long time ago. Ah, okay, well, ago. welcome back. We're glad you're here. Did you have a question for us today? Uh, yeah, I've got an ugly duckling for you. Uh, an ugly duckling. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A AMI, yep. if you look at the history, it's, it's awful. Mm -hmm. uh, but the business have gone through some fairly significant changes during 2022. Yep. And is sort of in the beginning of hopefully a good rebuild. And so keen for you to look at the sort of last 12, 18 months, mm -hmm. but obviously look at the, con the, the context of the whole of history to see how bad this used to be. Okay, so you're not in the stock at this point in time? I am actually. It is, uh, it's just what you call a specky punt. Yeah. So, but, yeah. so how yeah, long have you been um, in it? If you're saying this has been a bad stock, how long have you been in it? Uh, only recently, I would say about 12 months ago. Okay, gotcha. So what, what attracts you to the stock? Um, so I don't have specific inside information, but I, I am familiar with this business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the IT consulting space and we've been working with them for some time and uh, I just always take an active interest in some of the customers. Okay, gotcha. And it's been a typical uh, prospect mining organization that's gone through some b a bit of turmoil, but a whole lot of things have changed recently and I thought I'll just put a small bit of money into it. Okay, short, medium and long term trade. And, 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 yeah? and, and, and a bit of context, I am a student, but the purchase was done before I commenced the course, so probably <laughs> would not have done it. I guarantee, <laughs> you, what I, know now. I guarantee you wouldn't be in it right now um, if you'd done the course first, but are you short, medium or long term on this one? Uh, medium term. Okay, fantastic. Well, Janine's got it up. We'll have a good look at it. Look at it. Thanks for calling into the show, Willem. Yes, and Will Bye -bye. Willem, I actually mm -hmm. think that he's picked a, a good one. Yeah. He thinks it's a, mm -hmm. well, what you would call a DOG stock. Yeah, a DOG. But it's not necessarily it's not. the case. No, sometimes there are little gems in there. And, and mm -hmm. until, it's, it's until we look at the big picture, mm -hmm. like on the monthly chart. Well, he said he we did buy know. it 12 months ago before he yeah, did okay. that course. All yeah. right, well, let, let's just have yeah. a look and see how it's looking now. Okay. Um, he might have some good news for the company, which would be great. We always mm -hmm. like good news, don't we? We do. Now, at the moment, I can see that it's come all the way down to this mm -hmm. really important support level, which there's a low back here in November 2008. We don't know any history about this company. We don't know, you know, yeah. whether it's a backdoor listing, whether it's, you know, it's been trading as it is. But right now, I think this is there's some potential here for a turnaround, as he's saying. So he's mm. talking about the fundamental aspect of it being a potential turnaround. But the fact that we're getting all of these opens and closes all around the same level, we can yep. see so many indications of support there. What's volume doing on it? Volume would be interesting to look at. Good point. So let's go and have a look at that weekly chart and just throw some volume. Have you got, you haven't got volume in your thing there? No, that's the, Don't worry, good. it's quicker for me to type it. See? Oh. Uh, you sure? Yep. Quick draw McGraw, they call me. <laughs> All right, so there we go. You can see um, slightly volume. higher volume, but it's still a bit patchy there. Still a so, bit patchy. So it's a good point that you raise, though, because once we see that a couple of you know these bars, he's, now hang on, let me just open it up for you, mm. Willem, because you might not be able to see what I'm saying here. Um, so I'll just expand that up. But as soon as we start to see these um, up around that higher level, so here in October um, 2023, there were some nice bars there on the volume. Mm. We want them up around those sort of levels. But at the moment, there's a bit of a sell-off this week happening, a retest of that low. If it takes out that low, I'd again be concerned about it. We need to see it push through this high here on the 15th of September 2023 again, yep, at 11 and cents. then take off. Once it gets through that 11 cent mark, um, you know, anything's possible. I mean, to me, if you look, I totally agree with all of that. And people, if they're a little bit more conservative, might want to wait till it breaks sort of above this sort of level. Because um, that's, I mean, mm. that's a fair way away in, in terms of percentage way. But then you've got blue sky above it if you want to be a little bit more conservative. Because from sort of here to here. Well, you here, wouldn't be buying this if you didn't have good rules. No, mm. and that's the thing is you need to understand the good rules and be able to trade it properly. So, but yeah. I do like his choice. So, mm. well and well done. Um, let's see if we can turn it into a great trade. All right, Dale, mm -hmm. moving on, tonight's topic is all about answering a burning question that needs answering, which is, is it wise to play it safe and stick to just the bl best blue chip stocks in 2024, or is it best to take on more risk by getting into the top small cap stocks with the potential to outperform? Now, Janine, you know I love finding a stock that will outperform, so 
I am looking forward to, for you to share your preferred blue chip stocks and small cap stocks, okay? Okay, maybe I will tonight. And I'll do that very soon. At first, here's my quote for tonight from Peter Lynch, who is an American investor, mutual fund manager, author, and philanthropist. And I think that you have to learn that there's a company behind every stock. This is what he says. And that there's only one real reason why stocks go up. Companies go from doing poorly to doing well, or small companies grow to large companies. That'd be nice. We want to see mm. more of those, don't we? Mm. So, Janine, what's the what's the point you're trying to make? Well, if we're if we're looking at small companies, we want to see them actually go up. So, to answer that, I think it's important to remember that every company on the ASX is a business and not just a ticker code and a chart, but also small companies like the ones that we're going to show can grow to be big blue chip companies, especially if they have a good business. You have seen the list that I'm about to share, Dale. Now, so have you got any on your own watch list? I got a wave of them. I mean, the short answer is <laughs> yep. Okay. And I'm super excited about them. Oh, good to hear. And me too. And it seems as though it's taking forever for the stocks to take off at the moment. Yeah, you're right. And, and to me, I mean, whilst that might be frustrating to some, savvy investors use this sort of time to do the research ask the question. So if you're sitting there watching this show and you have a question, write it down as we'll be taking callers after the topic. Now remember, you'll never regret asking a question. Okay. Now as tonight's topic is all about blue chip and small chip st cap stocks, why would someone want to invest in small cap stocks and is there a better time to be in them? Well, obviously, there's a better time to be in blue chips and small caps, isn't there? There is. And when's that? Like, you know, when is it safer to be in blue chips? And when can you sort of decide, OK, now it's time to take a bit more risk? Well, to me, off market bottoms, it's safer to be in blue chips. Mm. And uh, once the trend's underway, then small caps. And I'm talking about trends are well underway for the market. Yeah, but I'd agree I think it would be unsafe to have small caps at the end of bull runs, big bull runs. Oh, true. I mean, normally mm. what happens, we end up seeing this, a lot mm. of the small stuff getting sold off in yeah. an unbelievable fashion and but some normally that's volatility. Back, but normally that's people do it back to front. Mm. They get into the small caps near the end of the bull markets yeah. and they're trying to jump in at the end of bear markets on the mm. small caps and it's not really... To if me, they could see a chart, they well, probably the, While the market's trending, small caps are fine. Yep, true. And on Comsec's public website, we found some interesting explanations about the definitions because some people mistake microcaps for small caps. So let's take a look. Now they share how there's no universal definition for large, medium or small cap companies and different markets divide them according to different characteristics. Now there's also um, this, for the Australian market, they say small caps are those or all those companies that sit outside of the largest 100 on the ASX by market capitalization. And the S&P ASX Small Ordinaries Index, which has the stock ticker code XSO, represents those smaller members of the S&P ASX 300 index, is used as a benchmark for small cap Australian shares. Now, companies in this index generally have a market cap of a few hundred million dollars to around $2 billion. And it may surprise some investors that small caps can be this large. Now, before we get into individual stocks, let's be clear about what blue chip stocks are. As this definition gets distorted, we ought to take a look at CanStar's website as a good source of information. Now, the website reads, blue chip stocks refer to stocks from companies that are highly reputable and traditionally have long records of paying stable or rising dividends. So true. And they also tend to be leaders in their industry that have been listed on our market for a couple of decades. These are typically big, financially stable companies. OK, Janine, now we've cleared all that up, let's get into the charts. Now, first up, we're going to take a look at the index that represents the small caps or in the XXO, XSO, if I can get my mouth to work, <laughs> or the small ordinaries index. And we'll also take a look at the top 20 shares, which is where you can find some of the best blue chip stocks. So let's get into the charts. So what have you got now? All right. So what I thought we'd look at first mm -hmm. is look at the um, XSO. Okay, oh, I've got to put my glasses on for this. So yes. What have you got on that one? So 
This is actually the small ordinary index. So what I'll do so is I'll hide... the bar chart is your ordinary. I don't want to ordinary. confuse everybody. Yep. Okay. So we're looking at this bar chart here, which is interesting. So you can see, first of all, I thought, just to illustrate your point about, you know, a lot of people jump in at the high. You can mm. see right here, there was this huge momentum in the last sort of roundabout year of the, um, the small ordinaries going up. And then the dramatic dive that happened after that. Now, we saw that um, the small... Companies mm. plummet 66%. Our market went down about 55. Yeah, about 55, yeah. And, and this was far more volatile, but some of the stocks would have gone a lot more, obviously, mm. than the, some of the big ones might have held it well, up. Well, the bottom know. there is April 2008. The Australian, the All Orders Index didn't bottom until March 2009. Well, this was March 2009. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it's just sorry. a bit deceiving you had the there. You can see. Spot sorry about me. that. You couldn't see it. Okay, so then what we see here is after that, we remember when the market recovered yep. and then it pulled back into 2012. Yep. Well, the small ordinary struggled for a long time to yeah. get going. We had some really good growth from a lot of the big stocks that took mm -hmm. off when the market was taking off. So I guess that's part of the message, isn't it? To be mm. getting into those bigger stocks at that point and then wait for the better times to get into select small companies, not just to load up on mm. small companies well, at the any big, time. The big companies are the signpost to what the market's going to do. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So I thought mm. quickly just overlay. This is the top 20 overlaid over the over the top of that. And you can see how there's been this huge outperformance through this mm. period here, as I was talking about. And even after COVID, um, we saw the, the 20 take off. Um, it's comparable in terms of the shape. Mm. Um, but it's held up a lot better. The big stocks have held up better than the smaller stocks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is the chart of the top 20 by itself. So we can actually see the bar chart of what's been going on. And I thought it was interesting just to illustrate this point because a lot of people are thinking, well, what's happening with the market? And you do tell them what's going on. I mean, we saw this dramatic fall where the market dropped about 16% or 17% during mm. that time and then remained sideways. Now, the... the um, top 20 dropped slightly less, about 16%. But you can see where the bulk of the movement obviously is coming from these top 20 stocks, mm. and that is the outworking of it. Now, I was having a discussion with our analysts this week and just mm. saying, look, um, the main thing we need to be doing now is just not necessarily just staying focused on the index, yes. which is what we mm. tend to do a lot, but it's now time to start focusing on the individual stocks within that index Correct. and a handful of them because... Mm. They're the ones that are, just pick the select ones and we identify what mm -hmm. those are. And they're the ones that are going to tell us the market direction when it gets confusing oh, like yeah, this yeah, and you yeah. don't know which way it's going to go. Mm, I agree. Mm. I agree. All right. So we've got another chart? Um, that's what oh, we've that's, got. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's, well, it's been, <laughs> well, it's been a while since I looked at those two, but yes. it is worth keeping track of what's going on as um, at times you'll see opportunity setting up in these charts. Now, that was great. And I'm ready to jump into the stocks. Are you? No, I'm ready. I was born ready. <laughs> You're born ready. All right. Now, what we've got tonight is a few of the small cap stocks. Now, yeah. the interesting thing was when I was going through the research on the small cap stocks, it depends mm. on what website you go to, as in the definition of those small cap stocks. Well, that's why I go to the S&P. Yeah. Because that's, I know. that's the index. It is the source. So I went, back, the to source. The, I went back to their fact sheet. Mm -hmm. um, the last one I think that was produced was October. Yep. Um, and that showed me a whole list of stocks, which I've picked out some of those mm. so they're obviously the biggest ones they show you on that fact sheet yes so i've picked out a lot of those big ones in there and i've used um optima to pick that out would some be, of the others that would that small ordinaries would change on a quarterly basis as well it they... would and it would change the stocks would change over time so mm. some of those stocks could be just right on that cusp of the hundred mm. and then you know between when that report was written and now they could be in the 100 and i noticed that um, a couple of them had moved into the 100 so mm -hmm. Um, but it's important to not sort of be f too focused on the market capitalisation of those shares and be just looking at what the S&P says on the okay. website. Mm. Cool. Okay. All right. Now, NHC New Hope is the first one, and I really like this stock. Just I do the, like this one the too. The beautiful trend that you, we had recently, um, and it tends to consolidate out of these lows, which is typical of what you'd mm. expect as sort of a nice growth stock to do, and then it bursts out of the blocks. But the trends are really nice. It's really easy to trade this type of stock. At the moment, it's a little bit more choppy, but I'd say that if whoever's um, looking at for a couple of smaller stocks that are mm. not too low in terms of market capitalisation, these are nice. These are the bigger ones that the S and P uh, websites mm. identified, and NHC comes into that group. And look at that; look it's at just that. lovely, it's isn't just it? The way come, it's unfolded. 
Mm. Yeah, it's just coming right back to its momentum. I do like it. And look at the volume. It's a lot more through here than what it was 2020, 2021. Yeah. It's really and, picking and up a lot Investors more. don't have to go really small no. to get some really good growth stocks like these. Just to add a bit of flavour to the portfolio, you know, when we're looking at big stocks not moving. So when let's look at the date of this. This was May 2021. 2021. So if you think about what had happened with, with the broader market, the broader market had already taken off. Yeah. So this was held back and it was, it's like, you know, when you hold an elastic band and all of a sudden you let it go. And this is what exactly what this has done. So I'd be looking, we're more likely to see these take off last. We're more likely to see the big, if, if things are going to get going, it's going to be big miners taking off. Yep. So watching those, but these are the ones that are going to give that sort of little bit of extra growth for the portfolio. So NHC is really nice in there. Paladin, which you know that I don't like anyway because of the uranium side of I things. I love it. But I knew that he'd like this chart, so I've particularly put that one I in. I love it. Just trying to be nice now. And I so, talked about uranium on my market report yesterday. Right. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so Just for you. Oh, just for me. So we're looking at this history here, and we've talked mm. about this on a number of shows that mm. we've done just because people write into us about it because of the potential that there is oh, here. There's huge potential on this stock. But if we're looking more shorter term, it has been going up now for what, mm. one, two, three, four months there. A bit of indecision now. So we could see a little bit of a pullback from here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for well, some of the traders. Up. I think 60% in the last 12 months. Yeah, well, so you wouldn't expect it to go up a lot more in a short, very yeah. short space of time. So I'd say that, you know, th there might be a little bit of a slowdown, possibly more of a sideways move, but that looks like a really nice little mm. setup for a little bit more growth coming out of the top of that. Just bear in mind the resistance from this high. Some people might choose to wait until it gets through that high of September 2021 before yep. going in. Okay. That's another really good example of one of these. CIA Champion Iron. Now, Huge volatility, uh, but when it eventually takes off and breaks out of that, if it can, that's the question right now, um, then it could be a good run. But, you know, one, two, three times coming up, fourth time, you'd think it would break through on oh. that fourth time by now, um, but it hasn't yet. So we may see a little bit of a pullback to around $7 before we see that, that move through. But given the resistance that there, it's there, sometimes certain stocks will pull back a little bit further just because they need a bit of a run-up to so get through that. why have you chosen that. this stuff? So, look, I chose it because of the potential. I think mm -hmm. um, if, you know, some of these iron ore stocks, if they can, um, if iron ore turns around and then BHP and Rio mm -hmm. are running, the smaller ones mm -hmm. will eventually follow on the, the coattails of mm -hmm. the, the bigger ones. But I'm just waiting to see a breakout. Anything that's sort of trading near blue sky, but it's not through yet, just mm -hmm. needs that little bit of a push, a bit of a pullback first and then a push through. So, so would just you watching. pick this one over at Paladin? Um, oh, that's a really good question. You just put me on the spot, didn't you? Absolutely. I did. Look, if you're looking at the chart from a charting perspective. That's all we're looking at is the chart. You're not talking about the underlying stuff. I'm just talking about the chart. Okay. I'm going to have to say that I'd pick Paladin from a charting point of view. Mm. But you need some really good rules for that to be mm. able to make sure that you don't get whipped in and out of you're that. You're talking about Paladin? Paladin I'm talking Why about. Why is that? Just false triggers because if mm. uranium's already gone up 60% yes, and Paladin hasn't moved much, right, relative to that previous high. Mm -hmm. So you'd think it had already have shot out of the blocks. So why hasn't it is my question. Good question. Mm. Good question. So, you know, I'd have a really tight stop loss on it anyway. Do you know, and this is what I said in my report yesterday, did you know uranium is also used for um, measuring the age of rocks? And it's also, yeah, it's also used for some x-rays with cancer. Right. So it doesn't just make nuclear power and nuclear But that's bombs. the majority of its use. Yeah, but it doesn't make... I don't think make, we're going to help it people doesn't make it all by bad. having an argument about this. I think we, they might get a bit of a laugh out of us sitting here. Well, <laughs> but I think, I think they really want to see more about the stocks. But I'm all for what nuclear do you power. Think, what do you think about CIA? I, look, I like it. I think you're right. I think... I'd still prefer Paladin over this, but I do like it. I think what you've said on this one is great. Okay, fantastic. So I do like it. Anything else you want to add to this or Paladin? Um, and look, say that Paladin is now your preferred stock? I'm not, oh, he's still trying on that. Okay, that's a really getting to be a really old joke now. Okay. All right, so let's just have a look. I'll keep bringing it up. But look at the moves on this one. So it's a 50% mm -hmm. fall. And so who's this? This is the same one. Oh, same one. So 50% fall, and of course, when it's got a 
trade off the bottom of that. It's going to go 102%. So you can make good money out of these sort of moves, even if you might be thinking to yourself, oh, is now that going to top out? this is a monthly out? chart too. And this is a monthly chart. So you take your triggers on your weekly? Take the triggers on the weekly, but you know, just keep watching those monthly bars as well for confirmation of what's going on with it. Um, you know, it, it might even be worth just taking some money and you know, heading for the hills at some point, given that um, if some people if some people are trading this now and they're already in it, let's have a look at how far it's gone. So it's it's gone up about 55%, and we know that that other move was about 100%. This one's about 80%. Mm -hmm. So if the stock's more likely to go up another what 20% or so, mm. you know, we're talking about nine to ten dollars potentially. Yeah. Okay, mm. I like it. All right, so let's have a look at the next one. It's Data 3, which quite yeah. a few people have asked us about this mm. over time. They have. And it was really exciting to see it break out to blue sky. So I know, it's been a bit disappointing, hasn't it, over the last sort of mm. most of this year. But um, but now it's starting to change. So what do you think of Data 3? Look, I actually, I, look, I am excited about this one. I think because of the industry, it's in everything else. But I do think it can run very, very well if you've got some good rules on it. Because uh, it is, look at it, it's had that really big euphoric rise, but since then it really hasn't done too much. If you look at the difference between sort of down there back in September 2018, that's a massive run. But mm. over, if we go back through to here, you're talking about, this. if I click here, so we're talking about in the last two years, it's done hardly anything. You know, if we go back to sort of here to here, you're looking at 37%. Mm -hmm. It's just been held back a hell of a lot, but it's finally broken free of this whole consolidation pattern through here and obviously did that in July last year. It's come back nicely down into this lower in August this year. Mm. I like it and I think um, it's a little bit of resistance up here. Look, um, I mean, I like one, one more thing about these smaller companies is mm -hmm. you can read on websites that mm -hmm. The um, someone or a, yeah. a, a commentary will be that oh you need to look at stocks like um, healthcare stocks you need to look mm. at discretionary stocks mm. there will be certain sectors that they'll be telling people to look at and then yeah. you go to another website and they say completely different sectors oh they do so it's analyst bias more than fact so it's about looking at the chart and just letting that confirm I've always you. had that argument with brokers you can mm. go to three different brokers and get recommendations for buyers and they've all got different ones yeah and it's like how does that work <laughs> exactly you know but mm. looking at this you know you're seeing the most recent but look at the volumes up in these last few bars through there so that's an exciting thing for me so if it breaks yep. through that top level i mean okay. i think it'd be great stock now we've done four of the smaller companies mm -hmm. right so we've got two big blue chip stocks to look at now okay cool. so we're going to look at and so you can tell me whether you would go for the blue chips or whether you'd go for the small stocks at the end of it how's that Put i already know now Okay, so GMG, a property stock, um, yeah. it actually triggered an exit here, which is interesting, but then it's reversed around. It's still, oh, well, hang on. First of all, we'll have a look. Do you want to look at monthly or weekly? I don't care. You're driving the mouse. Okay. So look, at the moment, there's some resistance here. We'll just draw a horizontal line across. We can see that um, there's some, you know, potential for it to slow down here. I'd like to see it pull back again before we know the direction, but at the mm -hmm. moment, it actually looks like it's recovered, which is interesting. So, I mean, it's amazing how one week can make all the difference on a stock, you know, before it looked like it was falling away and was going to take out this low here. But now it's starting to set up again and it's looking really nice. So in terms of the percentage to the, the, the all-time high, if we look at how far it's got to go to that point, it's probably got about 15% to that high. But it's about when can you get in. So if it mm. shoots through that level to get the entry, then you pretend you might only have 10% left to the high. So that's something to weigh up as well. But you know, it's a nice stock. It's not a stock that's going well, to shoot the lights shoot out. Shoot the it? lights out. No, but it's it's in the property space, so it's going to mm. be a plotter. But it's a better. Um, property stock this and there's a couple of property stocks that are actually on the top of our list but this is mm. the one you'd put in your portfolio to underpin your portfolio wouldn't you for nice it's one of them growth. top 20 share because you don't want to mm. fill your whole portfolio with low or small cap stocks yeah because of the volatility on because you're actually going to be watching lots of stocks very closely all of the time yes whereas this one you can look at once a month mm. but and it'll still keep just trundling along making good returns for you yeah that's a good so, example yep so what, what's the so other one? So that's next. So Westpac is one that we've talked about over time. Uh, I it's, thought you went off the boil on this one. 
Yeah, look, we did go off the boil on this one for a while, but I thought I'd just bring it back up again. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about banks recently, I know, yep. but I thought I have to have one bank in there when we're talking about top 20 stocks. You have to. Well, I guess I've made it my rule to have one. So if you if you look at that line mm -hmm. across there, you can see this yeah, huge support. And $20, for it. yeah. Yep, and we'll just grab a horizontal. Um, there we go. Nice green one. That will do, and we'll leave that there. So at the moment, it's getting support from those previous um, peaks mm. and troughs there. That, if you were looking at that and you didn't know it was Westpac, what would you be thinking? I'd be interested. I'd be very interested. You'd be very interested. Mm. Mm, very, very But it's just at the moment, the financial mm. sector has been weighed down by everything that's going on. So yeah. if the RBA turns around and says, okay, things have slowed down sufficiently and the inflation levels drop, what will you be looking at? Will you be looking at banks? Well, banks, banks may, they make money in times like this. Mm. And that's the thing I can't understand why they're not taking off at this point in time. Because obviously they're still negative around the economy, but mm -hmm. they're making big profits margins now. I mean, they only came out with all their reporting recently. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we've written an article for Money Magazine on the banks reporting and yep. how much money they're making. Impairment costs have gone up. Yeah. But, you know, historically, mm. what is that? Yeah. Yeah. But mm. to me, they should be doing much better than what they actually are. Mm. So why aren't they? But they're just being, I, don't, I think part of it is just being held up because of the nervousness mm. around the market, which is a great signpost for me to say, there's going to be a release of the Jack in the Box soon. Yeah. Cool. That's All right. my thinking. We just need to see a breakout from there. Well, that's it for our topic tonight. We've still got plenty of stocks to go through, but before we get into these, for those watching on YouTube, you can watch all of tonight's show, plus the exclusive content on TalkingWealth.com. The members only bonus content includes a more in-depth approach to lots more stocks and more detailed answers to your questions. You also get to watch Dale's weekly Australian stock market report, where he shares his view on the market and where opportunities may arise and you gain access to a hun or hundreds of amazing interviews with industry experts from around the globe. So what are you waiting for? Secure your free seven day subscription by visiting talkingwealth.com. Now on top of that, next week, we will be announcing something very special for non-Talking Wealth subscribers as a special Christmas present from us, especially just for you. So tune in to next Tuesday night's show to find out what that is. Now, right now, we will get into some more questions. So now's your time to pick up your phone and give us a call on 03 9290 That's 03 for Melbourne, 9290 Or you can text the number on your screen. Now, whilst we wait for your call, let's get into our next email, Janine. Now, it is time we get into our next question, which is, from Terry. Hi Janine and Dale. The stock that I'm interested in is LYL. The fundamentals are very good. PE is 8.79. Dividend yield is 7.83%. Fully franked. Earnings per share is $1.17. Return on equity is 44%. And they have around $82 million in cash. My concern is that it's at a near all-time high, albeit with future growth projections. It is currently at a support level, no gaps to backfill, good volume, but RSI on the high side. It appears to be consolidating. As I wish to buy, how will I know if this is a good price level now? For example, a base for a new high. Thanks very much for the shows. Particularly enjoyed Ben Shapara's video on Talking Wealth. Cheers, Terry. It's Have ben, I got that it, right? No, it's Ben Shapira. Shapira. Yeah, he's got a fintech app called De Niro. Right. It's really cool. Works with mortgage brokers and stuff. Great. Lovely bloke. I think I've Inter heard of that before. Yeah, I've, inter I've introduced you. He's done a couple of interviews no, on De Niro. Talking about. He mm. talks about open banking, which is so fascinating. Mm. So you have to watch them. Right. But we, I digress. We I'm need to look out. at the stock for Terry. All right. Now, this is interesting. LYL looks great. That I, looks great. It does look fantastic. I'm liking it. So first of all, let's just go and have a look at it. Terry in the big picture and see where this thing's tracking long term. Now, obviously, the, it's actually broken up through a lot of resistance through here, which is great to see. So it's taken off. So there's actually, you know, loads of resistance there, and then it's broken through the next level and gone up. I wouldn't be too worried mm. about it being near that all-time high. 
I think no. it looks really, really good. I think it looks good too, but I would like to see it, you know, I would have liked to see it come back and test on there, but maybe it's just super bullish and mm. it's not, doesn't need to come back there. But at the moment, uh, I guess, you know, the point here is you'd be waiting to see it actually come back a little bit more. We're yeah. down this week, so this is a good opportunity. Just take a breath, just be patient and wait to see if the price actually comes back. You really want to just see it mm. because there's a fair amount of resistance across here, across all of these That's tops here. That's the same myself. And we're seeing it reverse yeah. around this level. So really strong dive down here and another one where that outside bar is. What, what I want to see is not one of those, mm. um, obviously, but just a bit of a softening down, maybe another week or so down and then move back through that level. I like it. I do like it. And as I said, I don't think I'd be worried too much about it being at an all-time high. Mm. Good um, I choice. Think there's some good upside on it, so I think she's done well. Yeah, mm. I like that. Uh, we've got a caller on the line. Um, good evening, Matt. How are you this evening? And welcome to the show. I can't quite hear Matt. He was wanting to know about 360. You can't hear Matt? No, I can't hear Matt. Okay. Hello, Matt. Are you there on the show? No, he's obviously dropped off. So So we'll have a look at 360, shall we? Do we? We can. Okay. Why not? He's, well, it's your got, decision, he's put the not stock mine. up there. And, I, and if it's the map that I'm thinking of, yeah. um, I, I So this is Life 360. I was chatting about this actually only yesterday too because it's one of the stocks we've looked at a few times and I do like this yeah, one. Yeah, this is a really interesting stock. Yeah. Looking at the way that it's moved to the upside, it's just meeting a bit of short-term resistance. Mm. We'll just go straight to that weekly chart to have a bit of a look. Mm. And we can see there, it's just nice the way that it moves. It's just it's risen up to this high, pulled back again to this low, and it's doing the same sort of thing again. It's just repeating that move. So, look, ideally, I'd like it to see it take out that low, just to be oh, sure. Okay, you that want that to take out the seven. I want it to low. take out the seven ten low. But if it doesn't, and it breaks up through that high, I'd say that'd be a nice little opportunity. Is if we mm. just have a look at how far it's got to the all time high. There, it's, there's loads oh, it's 50 in there. there. Yeah. The only thing I'd say is, is it getting stuck here on this um, point across here? Are we seeing some resistance there? And you know, it might sort of temporarily. Mm -hmm. trade sideways below that level it's another possibility mm -hmm. before it gets through but okay. looks good all right thanks very much matt right. so in absence of knowing exactly what matt wanted we're fine we've covered him hopefully and yep. he can ring hopefully back we've anyway. helped him moving on remember to hit that like button and show your support for our channel by clicking subscribe it helps spread the message of how crucial getting the right education really is Right now we have a text and this is from David and he's asking about S32, another one of my favorite stocks. He goes, says it's found support at $3. Um, looking to enter trendline rule plus um, a few other things that he wants to talk about, uh, technical. Historically trends well. It's on his watch list. He's not in the stock currently. So let's have a, a look at that. All right, I've got that on the screen yeah. right now. So we can see that nice trend down and now it's continuing to fall. We did say mm. that it could turn around when we've talked about it before where mm. it was. But, you know, we also said it could come back to this level here. Now, I just, I'd rather skip to the weekly chart because we can see that in more detail here. Let's, I'm waiting for this stock, but see, I'm it's still waiting. very close. Yeah, it's so close now. We can see levels of all the opens and closes and where they were and where this stock is coming down to. But because there's a, it's trading under a trend line, you just wouldn't touch it right now. No. It's just too risky to go there and given that it's still falling because while we say that it's more likely to find support here it doesn't mean that it will no it's you know, just a possibility for the other possibility the worst case scenario coming down well it's not the worst case but it's another um, example would be that it could come all the way down to that well i think it's it's stronger support level somewhere around about 270 so just below where it is right now mm. so we're talking about if we look at here that's sort of where i think it's heading around to about that sort of level at the moment but if it breaks sort of that level, it is definitely going down to what your green line is. But I think I think it's got further to go at the moment, but it's close. Yeah. And that's the thing is it's probably exhausted most of its downward move, mm. um, but I'm still not touching it yet. Uh, but I do love it. I do want to get into it myself. I'm just sitting back and watching and being patient and twiddling my thumbs. Are you? Yep. It's, okay. on, it's one of the ones on my stock personal stock watch list. Have you got your trading plan ready? Yeah, it's right in here. Okay, once you've got it, you know, in your spreadsheet and it's all documented, oh. then you're ready. You know the rule. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, what have we got next? We've Malcolm. <laughs> a question from Malcolm. We do have a question, but if you want to chat to us, call in now on 92909988. 
Well, if you're a little bit shy like Janine is, email us <laughs> at infowealthwithin.com.au so we can answer your question in next week's show. Now, we have a question from a good-looking gentleman called Malcolm who writes, Hi, Dale and Janine. I hope this email finds you both well. Yes, it does. Congratulations on your show. I always catch it. My question is about Eris Resources. Um, it's in a trading halt pending a fully underwritten $30 million equity raising, fully underwritten $30 million equity raising by a $13.9 million institutional placement and a one for 4.73 pro rata accelerated non-renounceable entitlement offer. Uh, the net proceeds from the equity raising will, be, will provide general working capital and increased financial flexibility. Eris' largest stakeholder, Washington H. Sol Patterson, um, fully supports, well, they own 30.17% of it, fully supports the equity raising and has committed as much as $12.3 million, potentially increasing its shareholding in the company to 33.21%. Um, Jeffrey's Australian Bell Potter Securities Limited are fully underwriting it. Now, I've been watching this stock for a while, waiting for it to find a bottom and track sideways before moving up. Is this equity raising likely to result in a significant decline? If so, will this still be a stock worth following regards Mal? Wow. Do you want to can it or shall I? I'm exhausted just from reading that. Mm. Do I want to can it? I'm, you're, the, you're the nice one. I don't like it. And one thing that worries me is when you get, and I'm not going to look at the chart at the moment, when you're getting a stock that has around 33% ownership of one shareholder, mm. would that concern you? It would, but, you know, they might, maybe they'll want to take it over at some point. I well, don't that's know, what but I'm why thinking. would they then, why would they then put, you know, be doing this capital raising or be taking the stake? So mm. I just don't get why they would sink more money into a stock when I'm looking at a chart that's making new lows. Like, mm. Let me just, have a look at the let's chart. Just, yeah, let's just squash up the chart. Yeah. So, so the big H there says it's in a trading halt. So it's bottom. trading right down near this all-time low, if that's mm. the all-time low. Um, so why would a company like Sol want to sink money into that? I don't get I, it. I've obviously got a bigger picture. Mm. Um, I mean, stranger things have happened, but I don't like it at the moment. Um, is it a done... Would, would, should he keep it, watching it or well, look to trade it? Should he have it on the watch list? Well, I don't think he should be trading it at all, but because yeah. uh, it's that kind of stock. But just because it's doing a capital raising doesn't mean it's going to fall out of bed. Mm. So I'm not suggesting that's going to happen with this. But we know that prices mm. tend to get adjusted down when there's mm. a capital raising. It dilutes the equity. It does. Depending on how they're doing the capital raising. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to do too much on this stock because it's already down the historical lows. Mm. You know, and obviously if you've got Patterson or Sol Patterson's actually investing in it, it's a good company investing into it. But that, I wouldn't having... care about that. I mean, mm. I'd just say, look, you know, should he be trading it? One, No. probably not. I mean, looking at it, it's not going anywhere. Are there better stocks that he could be looking at? Truckloads. Truckloads, even at the low end. Truckloads. Right. So. Make your job easy. Just make the make the decision. That's all you really need to do then from there, Mel, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right. So that's all. That's all. On all this right. One. That's all. Looks like we've got a text from Chris. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, for texting into the show. We've got Whitehaven Cole. Now he's saying he bought in at seven dollars fifty on the thirtieth of October, short to medium. Been watching for a few months. And your thoughts, that's what he's asking for. Thanks very much for texting in. Now, Dale, how quick are you? Have you got it up? He bought in at $7.50. Fantastic. Whitehaven Cole. I didn't pick up the rest of it, but I all heard he bought it at seven fifty. dollars Okay, yep. So, therefore, um, mm. that's not a bad little point to get in, I'd say, right now. It's not too bad. I mean, obviously, if you're looking through here, around $7, there's 7 mm. Around seven fifty, around where it is. That's so not too bad because it's fallen back. I think it's just fallen back to momentum where it was there before. If you look at somewhere around here, look at that. It's just, I think it's all right. I think he's done well. Mm, but you just be, so just go to the weekly chart now yeah. so we can see that. So where should he be concerned about it? Uh, are you going to answer that? No, I thought, I thought that it was you a rhetorical would... question. I, I wasn't lining myself up. I was just lining you up to answer oh, that look, one. I mean, even though you look at that, I mean, there's plenty of. I think just there's a bit of resistance just a bit above where it is right there, but, yeah. you know, somewhere up around there. So to me, it's been sideways for such a period of time, sort of you know, over 
all this year and into last year. I think I'd want to be a bit of a solid break above this peak, I think, at that $7.99, so $7.80. Well, you'd think, you'd think that it's already like it. had a breakout, right? Because it's gone, mm. you know, he's obviously looked at this and thought, Where's the... No, I can't even click on it. Did you do something You're having it? trouble tonight, aren't you? Okay. Can you drag you it down You need to be gentle. Me? You need to caress. <laughs> it's just smile just, and just bring it down. Okay. It's fine. So therefore, it's broken out already, right? So he's probably mm. seen that. It's pulled back. He's got a bit concerned. But should someone be worried if a stock breaks out and then pulls back? No, it's pretty normal. Mm. It's all really, really... And I find that a lot of people do that. They see a stock break through as a resistance level. They jump in. And then it comes back in there and then they sell out. Mm. And all it is is just doing something normal. Yes. Um, and it happens quite often. That's why I see so many people trade too much because they don't have solid rules. Because I know we've said it on this show before. We, we never, ever, ever, ever buy mm. because a stock's done, broken out of a resistance, above a resistance or below a support. Yes. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. They're not buying sell rules to us. They're part of an equation that we put together. Mm -hmm. And that's the different things. But I do like the stock at the moment. And I think if it gets above this sort of sort of resistance through here, I think it, it could be a nice looking stock. All right. Fantastic. Anything else you want to say? No. But thank you for texting in. All right. Well, that's all we have on Whitehaven Coal. We hope you enjoyed Enjoyed our show on YouTube. Now remember to show your support for us by commenting below this video after the show because we'd love to hear your favorite part of the show. Also give us a big thumbs up. It really helps new people discover these videos and we would appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel so that when you know or so you know when we go live. Now for those watching via Talking Wealth, stay tuned for the bonus content, content that we've promised. In next week's show, we get into the top 10 ASX growth stocks to buy in 2024. We'll also answer your questions and so much more. So make sure you put next Tuesday night show on your calendar. Also, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for joining us. But for now, goodbye, good luck and good trading.